Hi everybody, this is Mr. Mittner. I'm, I'm back to, to help you get ready for this week's test. There's another video that really goes through everything that's on this test. It's a force in motion video. We watched it in class and I've had it online for a couple weeks. You can go back and look at that at any time. This is really a question of uh, what types of things might you see on the test and, and how to attack multiple choice questions. So if, if you have questions about the actual content, you can go back and look at the other videos. But for now, really it's just about, let's look at some questions and, and, and see how we could do to get ready for this exam. So if we go to the next slide, it says, which of the following is not an example of a balanced force? And we've got uh, four options here. Let me get my pen here. The first one says, a book sitting on a shelf. The second one is a car traveling at a constant speed of 55 miles per hour. The third is a car going around a curve. And D is a truck sitting at a stop sign. So the question is really asking what is not, be careful of these words here, what's not a balanced force. What they're really saying is which of these is an unbalanced force. Now you realize that there's an unbalanced force, another word for that is a net force. The way you know if you have a net force is that there's a change in velocity. Velocity is speed and direction, all right? So the way we know with a change in velocity is called, is called acceleration. The way we know if we have acceleration is if something speeds up or slows down or changes direction. So speed up, slow down, or change direction. So that's what I'm looking for. So a book sitting on a shelf, well, let's take a look at a graph of that. If this is distance and this is time, the graph's gonna be flat. Distance is not changing because it's not going anywhere. Time keeps going, so a flat line shows no acceleration. So that's not the right answer. I'm looking for acceleration. A car traveling at a constant speed of 55 miles per hour. Well, again, same kind of thing, but instead of a flat line, I've got a line like this where that might be 55 miles here and that might be an hour. I get my speed. It's a constant speed, though. So I'm, as you see, I'm not speeding up or slowing down or changing direction. Still, no net force. Okay, the force is still balanced. C, a car going around a curve. Well, I have to think, am I speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction? If I go around a curve, I'm definitely changing direction. So I'm going to hold on to that. That's a possibility. Let's go on to D, a truck sitting at a stop sign. Again, if it's sitting still, not moving, if my line is straight, whether it's flat, not moving, or going at a constant speed, there's no net force. The force is balanced. Going around a curve, I change direction, so that has to be my answer. It's C. All right, let's go on to the next slide. Which of the following would accelerate the most if it were hit with a car? Well, remember, acceleration is, is about change in velocity, so I've got to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Well, all of these things are going to do that. There'll be an acceleration if I hit it with a car. The thing is, what's going to happen? You know, how, what's, got to go back to my pen here. Which one's going to be affected the most? Remember, Newton's second law is force equals mass times acceleration. A. All right. So, if the force stays the same, car hits it the same, the force doesn't change, if mass gets really big, the A has to get really little. The acceleration has to be really little to have equal to the same force. If mass gets really little, the acceleration has to get really big to equal the same force. And I'm asking which is going to accelerate the most, so I want to know what's got the smallest mass. A train, a bridge, a bike, a tank. Which of those has the least amount of mass so it will accelerate the most with the same force. The answer is going to be bike. These three things have more inertia than a bike because inertia has to do with how much mass there is. It has to take more force to move it. Inertia is about resisting change. But if it's got little mass, a little of inertia, it's going to accelerate more. That's what Newton's second law is all about. All right, let's go to the next slide. If a race car hits the wall, let's choose my pen again. If a race car hits the wall, which of the following would be true? Okay, remember the Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. It means they're never alone. They're always in a relationship. They're never single. 
and the relationship's equal and opposite, which is refreshing, don't you think? So they're going to be in an equal and opposite relationship. So if one hits one with more force, that's not equal and opposite. That can't happen, according to Newton. So I know immediately I can get rid of this one, more force. The wall hits the car with more force. Not true, okay? It's going to be one of these two down here. They hit each other with the same force, equal and opposite. Now, let's go into the last part of it. But the wall moves more because it has more inertia. It's true the wall has more inertia, but does more mass mean that it's going to move more? Let's go back to the uh, second question, the second law. More mass means it accelerates less. Well, let's look at the last one. The car accelerates more because it has less mass. That's consistent with Newton's second law. Less mass, same force, it accelerates more. If you remember the astronaut video that we watched where the two astronauts pushed off of each other and they floated away, and then one put an extra mass on its back, a big battery pack, they pushed off e against each other, and the one that had less mass floated faster, and the other one still floated a little slower. Same force, but more mass means it moves slower, less mass it moves faster. So the right answer would be this last one here. All right, next slide. Which of the following would be an example of acceleration? Again, speeding up, slowing down, changing direction. A train traveling at a constant speed of 120 miles per hour. That might be, I gotta go back. I keep forgetting my pen. That might be a pretty steep slope, because that's pretty fast, but still it's a straight line. A car hitting its brakes, Speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction? It's slowing down. Let's hold on to that. We'll come back. Skydiver at terminal velocity. Terminal velocity means it's going the same speed. Airplane sitting on the runway, not moving at all. Same speed. If I've got a straight line, it's not that. Car hitting its brakes, it's going to look like this. I'm going along. Boom, I stop. Because remember, that stopped. At that point, there's an unbalanced force causing an acceleration, causing it to speed up, slow down, or change direction. So there is where the acceleration takes place. So the right answer is a car hitting its brakes. Next slide. If I flew 900 miles to Florida for vacation, and it took me three hours, what was my average speed? Well, again, if we go back to the formula for speed, the speed is distance. divided by time. So 900 divided by 3. I know that's not going to be 900. And 900 times 3 is that. I, it's not either one of these because I'm dividing. So it's going to be one of these. Don't get caught up in, well, that's the right number and not looking at your units. Because in science, units are everything. Okay? If I'm dividing, the keyword for division is per miles divided by hours, so miles per hour, miles per hour should be my right answer. 600 is the right number, but meters per second is not the same thing as miles per hour. i got to look at my units. So the right answer is here. All right, last slide. Really, we're looking for graphical interpretations of things on this test. If I've got, let me go back. Get my pen. If I've got time on the bottom, well, I always put time on the bottom and distance on the side. If I've got a flat line, it's not moving. At this point, the velocity is zero. And the acceleration is zero. It's not speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. If I have the same distance and time and I've got a straight line, I could have different lines here. The steeper that slope, remember, faster, 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 stop. The steeper that slope, the faster it's going. If you think of something going down that hill, it's not really a hill, but it's a way to remember. The steeper that, the more distance it's traveling in the amount of time, it's faster. But if there's no acceleration, if it's not speeding up, slowing down, and changing direction, there is a velocity here. There is a speed and a direction here. But there is not acceleration. As long as that line is straight, there's no acceleration. If I have something like this, I'm going along, 
I stop. Well, that is slowing down. That's an acceleration. Here I've stopped and now I start again and I'm going, I'm changing direction too. I'm going back to where I started. That's an acceleration. And I get to the bottom, I stop. That's an acceleration. I start up again, that's an acceleration. Every time I see a break point in here, that's a place where there's an unbalanced force causing an acceleration. So I'm looking for these points on the graph that represent where unbalanced forces take place, causing a speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction, which is acceleration. Acceleration, remember, is a change in velocity. I'm either changing its speed or changing its direction. I hope this helps. Um, good luck on the test on Monday. If you have any questions, come in and see me before school. Uh, we're hoping to have a lot of A's on Monday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I know I will, and I will see you on Monday. Have a nice day.